Welcome to the China Briefing. Volkswagen cuts jobs as demand for EVs plunges. Telegraph. Volkswagen is cutting nearly 300 positions at its Twickau factory in Germany due to dwindling demand for electric cars. The job cuts come as the company prepares for cheaper electric car models from China. Electric vehicles have fallen in popularity due to high inflation and reduced government support. Manufacturers fear that customers are being put off by the high upfront costs of electric cars, which are around £10,000 more expensive than petrol-driven vehicles. Volkswagen previously cut electric car production at another factory after lower-than-expected sales. Demand for electric vehicles is running 30% below the company's forecasts. Hypnosis has sold some songs to itself, and that's not even the odd bit. Financial Times. Music management group Hypnosis Songs Fund, HSF, has proposed a share buyback program of up to $180 million and lower advisory fees in an attempt to persuade shareholders to vote in favor of continuing the fund. HSF has faced criticism for trading at a 50% discount to its net asset value and the complex nature of its corporate structure. The proposed share buyback will be funded by selling 19% of its portfolio to Blackstone for $465 million, a related party transaction. HSF will also pay down $250 million of its revolving credit facility and reduce management fees. The buyback and fee reduction are aimed at addressing shareholder concerns and encouraging a vote in favor of the continuation of the fund. However, there are doubts about the valuation of the fund's catalogs, which are outsourced to Masersky Consulting. Shareholders will vote on the proposals later this month. How good are you at spotting fakes? Take the Globe's AI vs. Human quiz to find out. The Globe and Mail. Generative artificial intelligence, AI, is becoming increasingly advanced, creating photorealistic images, generating text, and even cloning voices. However, this technology also poses a significant challenge in distinguishing between what is real and what is fake. The misuse of AI-generated content has already been observed, with deepfake pornography and the spread of AI-generated images on divisive topics. Scammers have also used AI voice cloning tools to deceive individuals and extort money. Detecting AI-generated content is not an easy task, as image and text generators continue to improve. While some startups have developed tools to identify AI-generated images and text, detection algorithms are not entirely reliable and require constant retraining. Additionally, determining the authenticity of AI-generated text can be particularly challenging, as writing styles can vary. Misinformation and scams can be combated by investing in fact-checking and content moderation on social media platforms, as well as educating individuals about the capabilities and risks associated with generative AI. AI-generated videos are currently recognizable due to their glitchy and unnatural appearance. However, as AI video generation improves, it will become harder to spot fake videos. Efforts to combat deepfakes include watermarking digital media, but these methods require widespread adoption and may be easily circumvented. The responsibility to address the issue of misinformation and scams lies not only with technological solutions but also with individuals who must educate themselves, maintain skepticism, and rely on trusted sources for information. Somebody has to eat the cost, China's monumental local debt challenge mounts. South China Morning Post. Local governments in China need immediate liquidity in order to prevent public defaults, according to policy advisors and analysts. Concerns have been raised over the financial health of some indebted local governments and doubts have been expressed over the effectiveness of the central government's response. One proposal to alleviate the crisis is to allow local governments to sell 2 trillion Chinese yuan, $275 billion, to 3 trillion Chinese yuan of sovereign debt. The rapid rise in local government debt in the country is largely due to off-budget borrowing by local governments. Top modern wonders of the world, according to Brits. The Independent. The British public has chosen the modern wonders of the world, including the Channel Tunnel, Dubai's Burj Khalifa skyscraper, and the Internet, according to a poll of 2,000 adults. The International Space Station, Gaudi's La Sagrada Familia and the Golden Gate Bridge also ranked highly. The survey, commissioned by National Geographic, revealed that a quarter of respondents are more impressed by modern feats of engineering than those of the past. The research was carried out to promote the launch of the TV series Building Impossible with Daniel Asheville which explores groundbreaking construction projects. Europe's China probe exposes massive competitiveness problem. Bloomberg. Europe's probe into cheap electric vehicles, EVs, from China is appreciated but too late to reverse the region's fortunes, according to the head of Italy's Automotive Industry Association.
Roberto Vavasori, president of Anfia, said the sector is in trouble partly because the EU is trying to regulate its way to an all-electric future without appreciating the implications for industry. He added that Europe needs to address the disparity in tariffs for cars entering different countries and implement a carbon border tax that exempts batteries. Aluminium sector surging in India, but hampered by labor shortages Hindalco exec. Reuters. India's aluminium sector is thriving amid a global downturn, thanks to increased infrastructure investment and growing demand, according to Nilesh Kohl, CEO of Hindalco Industries' downstream business. He said India is already the world's second-largest aluminium producer and third-largest consumer and demand is set to double over the next decade. Kohl said that while India faces challenges including project approvals, quality standards and a shortage of skilled workers, the private sector needs to dial up the efforts on training, not only the government. U.S. Guru says China's supercomputer power may exceed all countries. South China Morning Post. China may already have three next-generation supercomputers in operation, more than any other country, according to Turing Award laureate Jack Dongara. However, due to U.S. sanctions, little is known about the Chinese exascale computers, which are expected to perform at least a quintillion calculations per second. Dongara said that Chinese scientists seemed quite proud of the machines, even though they have never appeared on the influential top 500 list. The absence of top Chinese computers from official rankings is likely due to geopolitical tensions in recent years, Dongara added. Analysis, to cut reliance on China, Russia turns to India for aluminium feedstock. Reuters. Russia has increased its imports of alumina from India in recent months to supply its aluminium plants in Siberia. Following the loss of two key sources of alumina due to the conflict in Ukraine, Russia has turned to India to diversify its supply and reduce its dependence on China. The move comes as aluminium production in China rises, leaving less flexibility for Russia to buy alumina. Rizal, the world's largest aluminium producer outside of China, has also secured alumina supplies from Kazakhstan to fill the gap left by suspended supplies and protect its margins. Yum China speeds up store openings on more predictable market. Bloomberg. Yum China is planning to open as many as 1,600 new stores in China this year, up from the previous target of 1,100 to 1,300. CEO Joey Watt said that market conditions were now more predictable than during the pandemic, and the company was better able to expand without sacrificing margins. She added that cost-cutting and efficiency improvements had helped protect profitability. Yum China is aiming to build a 20,000-store network in China by 2026. Copenhagen's far-reaching transformation into a sponge city. Spiegel. Copenhagen has invested 1.8 billion euros, 1.9 billion dollars, in a 100-year plan to protect the city from flooding caused by torrential rainfall. Extreme weather events across Europe this summer have been attributed to global warming. Copenhagen experienced record levels of rainfall in July 2016, causing an estimated 800 million euros in damage. The city's cloudburst management plan aims to protect the city by developing a mix of underground drainage and water collection facilities, catchment ponds and streets able to act as rivers in periods of heavy rain. Biden told media to ramp up scrutiny of Republicans' impeachment efforts. Telegraph. The White House has sent a letter to major U.S. media outlets urging them to ramp up scrutiny of Republicans' impeachment efforts against President Joe Biden. The letter, drafted by White House spokesman Ian Sams, called on news organizations to be cautious in their coverage of the proceedings, which the White House argues are based on lies and disproven claims. The move has been criticized by journalists and Republican members of Congress, with one representative accusing the White House of contempt for transparency and an honest press. Ant Group's consumer credit arm secures 4 billion yuan of credit. South China Morning Post. Chongqing Ant Consumer Finance, the consumer credit unit of Ant Group, has received a 4 billion yen, $550 million, credit facility from a consortium of banks arranged by the China banking unit of Mizuho Financial Group. The consortium includes Mizuho Bank, Bank of East Asia, Fubon Bank, China, Hana Bank, Kasakornban Bank, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corp., Shaman Bank, KDB Bank, Isun Bank, CTBC Bank, Wuri Bank, Morgan Stanley, Krungthai Bank, and Cookman Bank. The loan is the largest consortium loan in China's consumer credit industry to date. The interest rate and other details of the loan were not disclosed. Over 95% chance of El Nino conditions from January-March 2024, U.S. forecaster. Reuters. The El Nino weather pattern is likely to continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter from January to March 2024, with a more than 95% chance, according to the U.S. Climate Prediction Center.
El Niño, which is a warming of ocean surface temperatures in the eastern and central Pacific, can cause extreme weather phenomena such as wildfires, tropical cyclones, and droughts. The phenomenon is already causing calamities across the globe, with emerging markets more exposed to swings in food and energy prices particularly vulnerable. The upcoming growing season for crop production areas in the Southern Hemisphere, including South Africa, Southeast Asia, Australia, and Brazil, is likely to be impacted by the strong El Niño. Australia's Weather Bureau has also warned that El Niño indicators have strengthened and the weather event will likely develop between September and November, bringing hotter and drier conditions to the country. China's defense minister, not seen in weeks, skipped Vietnam meet. Reuters. Chinese defense minister Li Shangfu pulled out of a meeting with Vietnamese defense leaders last week due to a health condition, according to two Vietnamese officials. Li's absence comes after China's unexplained replacement of Foreign Minister Qin Gang in July following an extended period out of the public eye. The moves have raised questions about the Chinese leadership's decision-making. Li has not been seen in public since August 29. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.